So welcome to numerical methods for mathematical finance. And in our last session, yeah, we somewhat finished our discussion on random number generation, but I would like to add um, a few remarks in this session. So what we did, we discussed random number generation and we were in a session, how we generate drawings of other distributions. So, maybe most prominent example of the inversion of the distribution function, okay. But then we discussed here the acceptance rejection method in our last uh, session. So let me shortly recall the method and uh, then use this method to motivate a little bit weighted Monte Carlo and importance uh, sampling. Okay, so that was the method looked a bit complicated, but the idea is that we like to generate a random number sequence xi, yeah, which represents drawings of a random variable x that has a distribution function f. And so we do not know f inverse, yeah, but we know the density of f. Okay, so that's the density here. Um, but what we do is we generate a sequence y, so sampling a random variable y, and this random variable y has distribution function g, but from this random variable y, we only take a few samples, so we filter out some samples, and these indices here, the ones that we take, are just the ones where this criteria is fulfilled, and in this criteria, there is a second uniform that we need to draw. So we need to draw tuples yeah, to the side if we take it. And this second uniform is here our uj, yeah, which should be less or equal this boundary, which is given here by the densities. Uh, we had a small modification to this. Okay, and the modification was that when we need to generate here this G distributed sequence, we could yeah, have the case that we know the inverse of the distribution function G, then we could generate the G from uh, another uniform. So actually the tuples you need are here, the U for this acceptance or rejection decision and another uniform V yeah, which you then transform to the G distributed Y. So you can think of this as doing a sampling on this two dimensional yeah, interval here, zero one in both um, components. And of course, then your acceptance criteria reads like this. You just replace the little Y with G inverse of little V. And we also had a very nice example. So our example was that we could use an exponentially distributed random variable. So here this y is actually exponential distributed. Well, with a sign, yeah. So actually the set here is um, exponential, yeah, minus logarithm of one minus a uniform. And then we also add a sign, so it is symmetrically exponential distributed. And then we could use this. So this guy here has this distribution function, this blue one here, this is the G. Then we, then we could use this to sample a normal distributed random variable X, yeah? so normal distribution. And you know, doing a little bit calculation with the two densities, yeah, exponential minus absolute value of X and exponential minus X square half, yeah? the two densities, we saw that here our acceptance criteria is that the u is below this um, expression. And this is actually here this line. Yeah, So this is here, th this function, are we below this function here? Okay, so this is where we accept the point and this is here where we reject the point. So in this picture, the method looks like that. Okay, we do this thing that we sample in the two dimensional 
rectangle here. Yeah, we sample two uniforms. So first one we sample the V. Sampling the V, we use here the inverse of the distribution function to find the Y. Okay, so this guy here is the Y. You know, sampled from the V, the little V. And then we make the decision if we keep the point yeah, or reject the point. So we sample another point, say this here is the U. So now we sample the U here on this axis. Yeah. So, and then I ch check here, where is the pair U and V? Is it in the green area? Yes, then I accept the point. Is it in the red area? Then I reject the point. Okay, so this is like an indicator function. And if you now consider that the V is fixed, yeah, so this guy is fixed. So conditional that you have already generated the Y. Uh, how many points do you accept? How many points do you reject? Okay, what you actually do is you do a Monte Carlo integration of this indicator function, which is one here. You accept all these guys, and then which is zero here. So you reject all these guys. So if you look at the conditional acceptance rate, conditional to having this point here, y, then actually you ac accept exactly, okay, the whole interval here is one. So you accept exactly this proportion here of points. Okay, so that's the algorithm. And yeah, what you actually do is you sample the G distributed Y, but then you adjust how many of these Y's do you observe by adjusting the density, you divide by G and you multiply by F. Yeah, And so you adjust the density to observe more points Yeah, where actually for example, the normal distribution would generate more points and less points where the normal distribution would generate less points. And this is exactly this function here. Okay, so now I believe you have maybe a nice intuition what this guy is doing. And you see also somehow here that it is somehow a two-dimensional integration that is going on behind. So, now let's use this and consider the case where we apply this method to a Monte Carlo method that likes to calculate or approximate an expectation. So I like to consider now a Monte Carlo integration as an application. So my sequence XI, which is generated with acceptance rejection, so my sequence XI is now used to feed into a Monte Carlo yeah, integration method. The acceptance rejection method already appeared a bit inefficient because we sometimes throw points away. Yeah? And it's especially inefficient if you throw away many points. Yeah? So the maybe inefficient if your acceptance rate is low. Yeah. So that is, if you go back here to our picture, you like to have that here, this green area is filling as much space of this yeah, two dimensional uh, square here. Yeah. Um, as much space as possible. Yeah? So actually that was this constant C, yeah, which is actually pushing you know, the function you know, to the top line so that we can fill as much as possible. So consider the case where we would like to approximate uh, the expectation H of X using Monte Carlo integral. So we have here the Monte Carlo integral. So that is one divided by N, take the sum H of XI. And XI is now my sequence that is generated here with acceptance rejection. Okay, so this means the sequence XI is actually in the background, a sequence YJ. 
where from the sequence yj, I have thrown away a few points. So if I have thrown away a few points, I could just add here all the other points to the sum by multiplying with the indicator function. So instead of looking at the sum h of xi, which are the filtered points, I could just look at the sum h of yj. So take all the points from this other distribution, which is wrong. But then in this summation, multiply with the indicator function. So this becomes a zero when I reject the point. Yeah? So this here is just the same as h of the corresponding xi. Okay, so you now have to define how the indices relate Yeah, uh, if the point is accepted or it is zero if it is rejected. Yeah? So you can just place this stuff here. Now here underneath the sum, it doesn't change the sum. And what about this guy here in front? Yeah, so this is the N. So um, this is the number of points we have accepted. You know? So how many points X do we have? Well, the number of points that we have accepted. So we have the, the relation that actually here our N is the number of points that we have accepted. So it's just take the sum over all points you generated in the acceptance rejection method and sum this indicator function. Okay, so you take the sum of all the point and you sum this indicator function. So when looking at the application of a Monte Carlo approximation, I could just take here more general h of y multiplied with the indicator function, and then one divided the sum of the indicator function. So you see that what we do is our approximation can be written here by one divided the number of points we have accepted, take the sum over h times the indicator function. Okay, so that's the first step. And you see that we are a little bit in, uh, inefficient because we are throwing away some, some points here. Yeah, uh, some, some elements in the sum are zero. Yeah, but now if you go back to the picture, you see if this V here is fixed, yeah, conditional to, to the same V or say conditional to the Y here. Yeah? So we are actually on this line here. Then instead of in the sum having sometimes indicator one and sometimes indicator zero, so throwing some away, I could just immediately multiply with the proportion of points that we expect. Yeah. Okay, so let's study a little bit our um, indicator function. So if yeah, we are now in this two dimensional yeah, um, situation. Yeah? So if A, R, U, Y denotes here my acceptance indicator. So the guy that we had on the previous slide. Yeah? So this is my indicator function, U being less or equal F of Y, C times G of Y, the ratio of the densities with the constant C. Then um, if you keep the Y fixed, yeah? so for a fixed Y, and you look at the expectation over all possible values for the U, then this is the expected rate of acceptance for a given y. So this is here the expectation uh, of this indicator function you know, where you plug in the random variable u for a fixed y. Yeah, then you can just write this here as uh, an integral yeah, because u is uniform, it's the indicator du. You know? So it's just my indicator du and we already uh, 
did this exercise. Yeah, okay, this is the integral, okay, indicator function over u. Yeah, u is less than um, f divided by c times g of y. So this is just the integral from zero to f of y divided by c times g of y, yeah, du. So that's just our conditional acceptance rate. The function that we observe in this, this uh, little picture gives us here the probability yeah, that we accept this point y. So going back to my Monte Carlo integral. Yeah? So I started here by looking at this Monte Carlo integral. My first step was that I considered, okay, this is acceptance rejection. I can just think of taking all the points and using the indicator function when I throw it away. But now I can maybe replace here the number of points which I accept. I can maybe replace it with the sum of the probabilities to accept the point. When I just replace here this indicator with the probability to accept the point. Okay, so instead of say, for example, you have always the same Y for a certain time and you have say 10 points, yeah, where you have the same Y. Uh, so you have 10 times here, this expression with the same Y and out of these 10 points, say, there's seven times the indicator function is one and three times the indicator function is zero because you know that the R here is 0.7. Why not just take the 0.7? And instead of taking one point with the 0.7, I could also just take all points with 0.7, but then I divide here not by the indicator function, I divide here by the sum of these probabilities. You see, this is just a weighted average of h of y. Okay, so this is just maybe an intuition. Maybe this is better hmm? because instead of using the indicator function, now I use the information that I know or the probability with which I'm accepting the point. I know that because I have to know it for the acceptance rejection method. My claim is that this expression here, where I use the weight R of Y, this will also converge to the, to the expectation, which I like to approximate. Okay, so why is that? Yeah, so maybe we have to prove it, it comes on the next slide. But so just a small remark, uh, if you place here a one divided by K here, okay, yeah, then you could also place a one divided by k here in front. Okay, that doesn't doesn't change anything. Okay, and then if you look at the one divided by k over the indicator function, so the average of the indicator function, of course, that converges yeah for a fixed y to our r of y. So you see, they actually two Monte Carlo approximations. One is the one H of Y, and the other one is the one with the indicator function approximating the R of Y. Yeah. So actually behind there's a two dimensional integral. Yeah, so let's have a look that this stuff here is actually approximating the expectation h of x, yeah, which I would like to approximate with my Monte Carlo method. So instead of looking now at the indicator function, I'm now looking here at the sum one to n. Yeah? So now I take all the points from the original sequence h of y, and then I apply the weight r of y to this where the R of Y is the F of Y divided by C times G of Y. So I apply the R of YI to this and I'm renormalizing here with the one divided by the sum of these 
R of Ys. Yeah, plugging in the definition of my R, you see that this is here F times F of, sorry, this is here F of Yi divided by C times G of Yi. So you see that you can just cancel here this constant C, yeah, because it appears here and it also appears here in this sum that is doing a norming. Okay, then if you now define your weights, okay, now let's define the weights as being F divided by G, yeah, so the C is now gone. You see that this is just a weighted sum. It's the H of Y multiplied with a weight W of Y, H of YI times W of YI divided by the sum of these weights. So you see the approximation of expectation H of Y, yeah, so Y, would just be the case where all the weights here are equal to one. Yeah, so then it's just the sum of H of Y, one divided by N. So that's the case where the weights are one and where the density F is equal to the density G. This expectation of H of Y. But now if I use these weights here, then I'm re-weightening my Monte Carlo approximation. So I have a weighted Monte Carlo approximation. I'm re-weightening it. And this, yeah, my claim is that this is now approximating the H expectation of H of X. And also note that now with these weights here, you see that some are larger than one and some are smaller than one, yeah? because I have got rid of this C, yeah? which was used in the method to pull down this ratio below one. Yeah? Uh, because sometimes there are regions where, if you are in our example, the normal distribution will have more points. Yeah? So I increase the weight. And sometimes there are region where the normal distribution has less points than the exponential, so I decrease the weight. Okay, and if the weight is always one, then the two are actually the same and we are not doing something, something different. Um, so I have these weights, some are larger, some are smaller, but if you look at the average of these weights, so if you look here, one divided by W, uh, one divided by the sum over all those weights, then this converges to, okay, this is just the Monte Carlo ex, um, approximation of expectation of W of Y. And now if you plug in the um, definition of the weight, okay, so you see the Y has distribution G. So this is an integral zero one G dy. And if you then plug in the definition of the weight, okay, the weight was F divided by G. So you see here, there's the G canceling, you integrate the density F and integrating the density over the whole domain is one. Okay. Um, oh, actually, there's a small type because the domain is not from zero to one. Yeah, so actually to do this, you have to transform it to the, uh, yeah, if you would like to have zero one, it should be the V. Yeah, otherwise maybe it's better to fix this here and write say ah, yeah, or whatever your domain is. Okay, so you see that what I have here with the weight is one divided by N times this here converges to one. So this here is something that is similar to my one divided by N. So in average, the weights are just a reshuffling. So maybe you can just use here this little result for your intuition. And now I place here a one divided by N in front. 
And I do nothing wrong if I place another one divided by n here. Yeah. Okay, so you see this here is a one divided by n. And here I have a one divided by one divided by n. Yeah. So I have, uh, there's, there, there's no change. Yeah. So this guy cancels with this guy. But then you see that actually this here is converging to one due to this, this uh, derivation here. And this here now looks like a Monte Carlo approximation, one divided by n, the sum h times w of y. So actually it is, this here is the Monte Carlo approximation of expectation h times w of y. So this here is going to then a one. And this here is now another Monte Carlo approximation. So let's look at this other Monte Carlo approximation. Yeah. So one divided by N H of Y, W of Y. Okay, so Y is actually here my G distributed function. Okay, this is a Monte Carlo approximation of the expectation H of capital Y, the random variable Y, W of capital Y. Okay, if you now write this uh, with the density. So the Y is a G of Y dy over the whole domain. So I'm integrating H times W times G. Yeah, but if your W is the weight, yeah, if your weight is just here, the F times G, you see that the G is canceling here and here, okay. So this guy then becomes an, an F. And you see that I'm actually integrating H of Y, F of Y, dy. But F is the density for my target random variable X. So I'm actually approximating expectation H of X. Okay, so maybe trivial stuff, but you see that the acceptance rejection method, so it is to some extent, if you apply it in a Monte Carlo setting, Monte Carlo integral setting, you can see it as a two-dimensional integration. And this indicator is just well, a very brutal form of writing this second part of the in integration, which we actually know analytically. Yeah. So we know, we know the weight analytically. So we can integrate this, this uh, second direction out and have here this, this weight. So this um, scheme that we have now derived yeah, or motivated a little bit from doing the acceptance rejection is also called weighted Monte Carlo or sometimes actually the application is important sampling. So here, these, this ratio that occurred, the F divided by G is called the likelihood ratio. So the setup is as follows. If you have a random variable X that has density F, and if you have a random variable Y that has density G, then I need in addition that if G of Y is zero, then F of Y is zero. Okay, so why is that? Because I'm sampling according to the distribution G. So if the point in G is impossible, it has to be impossible in F, yeah? because otherwise I would miss points in the expectation H of X. Yeah? So if this condition is fulfilled, then we call here our weighted Monte Carlo approximation. Uh, so we call this weighted Monte Carlo approximation of expectation H of X and the weight is called 
like the odd ratio. So let's recapitulate this a little bit and you see that actually acceptance re rejection with say Monte Carlo as an application is a two dimensional integral. And what we are doing is we interpret it or we write it as a one dimensional by integrating one dimension analytically out. So what we are interested in is the expectation age of X. And we calculate the expectation age of X by calculating age of Y conditional, so conditional expectation, conditional to accepting the point. So expectation age of Y conditional that my uh, A R U Y acceptance indicator is equal to one. So conditional expectation is here my two dimensional expectation renormalized. This is the one divided by yeah, some of the indicator functions in the um, in the guys. They're renormalized here by okay the acceptance rate. So this guy here the expectation of the indicator over all, say over all first uh, for a fixed y over all u, this was the f of y divided by c times g of y, then integrated integrating also over all y, uh, this was just the one divided by c. Maybe you remember this, this thing is just the one divided by c. So dividing by this gray stuff is actually just multiplying here with the c. So what I have is now I do the ICDF method for the Y. So I represent now my Y as G inverse of a uniform. So I have a two dimensional uniform, the V that samples the Y and the U that is used in my acceptance criteria. Okay. And then I calculate here this expectation. So I integrate over the two dimensional domain. If you go back to our picture, so this is just integrating here over this domain. Yeah. And this green area here is the AR indicator function. Okay. And I'm, I would like to calculate expectation H of. Yeah? So I calculate here the integral H of the Y times the indicator function accepting accepting the point. And now you can, yeah, you see that this part here of the integral is the only guy that depends on U. So you can integrate the U out, okay? So if you integrate the U out, it means that integrating here the one part over the AR gives me here my, my R. So the only thing that is left is now the one dimensional integral over, over V with the probability that I um, accept uh, the point. Okay, so you see that the indicator is actually then replaced by its uh, expectation. So this here is the probability to um, except the point. And now it's only um, definition. Yeah? So we defined here C times the R. Okay, the C times the R was just defined as the W. Okay, that's just a redefinition. And now you see that what's here below is this um, expectation of the weighted function h of y. So it's h of y times w of y. Yeah, okay, so that was maybe a nice tour from our random number generation method when applied to Monte Carlo, actually we come up with a weighted Monte Carlo um, scheme. So this technique of writing a Monte Carlo integral with a weight 
um, this is actually very general. Yeah? So the thing that you just saw is just um, a special case. So let me make a few yeah, very short remarks. And some of these techniques will pop up uh, later again. So if you have the general case, so this is now, now a bit a general case where the weight is just a random variable. Uh, so W depends just on omega. Then I call here this a weighted Monte Carlo approximation when I'm calculating the Monte Carlo approximation. So H of Y I uh, with um, a certain weight. And now you can choose the weight to do very different things. There's, for example, one application, which is you just like to improve calculating the expectation H of Y. So this is now H of Y. It's not the other application, not the expectation H of X, where we transform the density. Yeah. So now actually I just want to use the weights a little bit to modify, improve the um, expectations uh, of, of H of Y. And for example, a technique is you can reduce a numerical error in this um, integration. So for example, if you know the expectation, so for example, if you know the expectation of Y analytically, no? but you observe that your random number generation doesn't match this analytic value, you could just use the weights to adjust a little bit for this. Yeah? Uh, these techniques are then called moment matching. Yeah? You can match the expectation, match the variance or whatever. And maybe we can have a separate session on, on this. You could also use the weight to reduce the variance of the integrant yeah, to, well, improve the Monte Carlo convergence rate because you know that in the Monte Carlo error, there is the variance of the integrant popping up. Yeah, The sigma squared is popping up. So you could use the weight actually to improve a little bit to optimize this, this variance. This, of course, depends here on the H. Yeah? Uh, integrant means H of Y. Yeah? So other function may require other improvements. Such techniques are then sometimes called control variates, yeah? or the larger chapter is variance reduction. And we have uh, a chapter on control variates later. So this is one possible way of using here these weights. And what I did in my motivation with the acceptance rejection was different. What we did was we were actually trying to improve the approximation of expectation H of X with here a different random variable X. So we are, we are moving from one probability distribution from one random variable to another one. And there's actually a special case. It's the case where we use for the weight. It's the case where we use for the weight here, this ratio of the densities, which will give different values, different weights, yeah, according to the change of the densities. And this technique can be used to improve the calculation here expectation H of X. For example, if G would be equal to F, then the Y would be equal to the X. And you would just calculate expectation H of X in the classical way. But now you could use a different G. You still calculate expectation H of X, but you do use a different G. So you use different values in your Monte Carlo approximation, and then correct for this difference by using the weight to still sample, still approximate the same expectation. And this trick 
can be considered or can be used for the so-called um, important sampling, because you can now use this distribution G or this density G to be large in important regions. Okay, what does important regions mean? Okay, important of course depends on the function H. Yeah? So it could be that the function H is zero in a certain region, and then it is doing something in a certain other region. So maybe it's a waste to sample a lot of points in the region where the function H is zero. So you can now use the density G to put more points in the important region. So this is called important sampling. And it will also lead to just a weightening scheme here for your Monte Carlo approximation. Yeah, so let's have a short look to important sampling. Okay, that's just what we did with the motivation from the acceptance rejection method. So let's now um, X here and say, Y be two random variables, okay? And now assume that the random variable Y has your density, okay, now I call it phi Y, okay, before I called it G, and the random variable X has your density phi X, okay, before it was called the F. Then you can write expectation H of X with respect to the density phi X, and you can right expectation H of Y with respect to the density phi Y. And now I uh, assume that I have a similar um, requirement yeah, that impossible points in G are also impossible in F. So now I call it Y. So impossible points in phi Y. So impossible points for Y are also impossible for phi X. So for the X, at least at the regions where H is not equal to zero. So I would like to have, because in the other regions, I'm calculating here an integral. No? I don't, I, I don't care. So I just would like to have the condition H times phi of phi Y, if this is zero, then H times phi X should also be zero. Because then I can define here my weight in a nice way. So my weight is now the F divided by G, now called phi X divided by phi Y. So I just define my weight as the ratio of the densities my likelihood ratio, at least if phi y is larger than zero, okay, where I will have points, uh, otherwise the weight is zero. And then I have here the calculation that we already had previously, expectation h of x, okay, that's the integral h of x times the density phi x dx. Okay, now I can write phi x as W times phi y, uh, because if you write W times phi y, you see that this phi y will cancel with this phi y, and you just have the phi x left. Okay, so that's just just the phi x. So that guy here is just the, the phi x. Yeah, but then you can now interpret this as changing the values, okay? So now you can just interpret this as changing the values and looking at a different probability, yeah? So I change the weight or the value of H of X and um, sampling with a different probability. So I just reinterpret this here as now integrated yeah, so you see from left to right, yeah, there's no change. I just plugged in a different integration variable. Instead of X, I call it now Y, there's no change. But now I'm interpreting this as integrating with respect to the density phi, a different function. Yeah? So I'm now integrating here a different function, H times Y. So you see that it's actually the same Yeah, if you, sample different points y, but then integrate the function h times y, or if you're sampling the points x and integrate the function 
um, age. And you can use this to um, sample more important points. Yeah? So you can now choose the sequence Y to sample important regions of age more often. Yeah? So if you would like to have as a concluding remark, a small example, consider the application where you would like to value, say, uh, an option. So the option has maybe this payoff here, it's zero here, okay. There's the strike K and then it's one here. And now you are under, um, say, a certain model, say a Bachelier model, which has some normal distribution as a density. So this is here maybe your density. Okay. So that's now the density phi x. Okay. And your Monte Carlo algorithm would now sample points. Okay. Many points here, yeah, where the density is large. Okay. Many points will, will be sampled here. Okay. So you sampled a lot of points in region where actually nothing is happening. Yeah? And so maybe you improve the whole thing if you shift the density to a region actually where, where uh, the function h is actually having the relevant behavior, yeah? This kink is maybe, yeah, at the strike, there's maybe the relevant behavior. Okay, so this here is my function phi y, and now I'm sampling my points according here to phi y. So here I'm, I'm, I'm now sampling around the important region, but of course I have to correct the values that I'm calculating by now multiplying my function h so this here is my function h with the correct weight. So this technique is uh, called uh, important sampling. And you see it's related to doing Monte Carlo with a weight where the weight is like the ratio. Yeah? So that's method is sometimes called like the ratio method. And actually it is a little bit related to our acceptance rejection method. Okay, so here this section weighted Monte Carlo and uh, important sampling. So, so in the script, you just have here a very short section on weighted Monte Carlo and important sampling, but we will come back to say variance reduction, control variance later. And uh, actually this now concludes our section here on random number generation. So before you find here this slide with the references, uh, yeah, sometimes I made references. Um, from the section on random number generation. Yeah, that was it for the random numbers.